So now that we've established how trophic levels build themselves up, up and how they work within an ecosystem, we can now look at some more dynamic concepts of an ecosystem and utilizing some very important terminology and mathematical components that we will consider ecosystem productivity. And that's what we'll entitle the next couple of flowcharts actually. Ecosystem productivity. And this will be the first part of this series on the productivity of ecosystems. So, in order to understand ecosystem productivity, we have to, of course, start at the very bottom. We have to start at the first trophic level. We have to start at the core of our ecosystem, and that will be termed primary production. We have to look at primary production and understand what its role is in the entire productivity of our ecosystem. We can consider primary production the following. It's going to be considered the amount of light energy now you have to immediately ask yourself, why light energy at this primary level? Well, that's because radiant energy has to be converted into chemical energy, and that's what we're going to be doing. It's the amount of light energy, uh, just like I said, converted into a more usable, a more biological, biochemical form known as chemical energy, amount of light energy, converted to chemical energy. And now we're going to look at the dynamic nature of this during a given time specifically. So remember how time plays a big role in the idea of population ecology? That time concept will show up again and does show up again in ecosystem ecology as well. So we're going to look at how much light energy is actually converted into chemical energy over a given time. And specifically, this is going to be looking at, looking more specifically at ecosystems of interest to us, which would be those with photoautotrophs, those who use photosynthesis to make their own food, to make their own biomass, to manufacture and produce their own biomass via, of course, that very important process of photosynthesis. So we're starting at the core. The foundation of every single ecosystem will be its primary production and all of the production, therefore, all of the productivity, therefore, will be based on this effect, the effectivity, how good this is doing. Now, in order to understand the primary production, we're going to use two basic components to measure primary production. Those will be the following. First and foremost, we're going to use gross primary production. So I'm actually going to write this out as gross primary production for a purpose, because this is usually just referred to as G. P -P. A lot of econ seems like in ecosystem ecology, and that's literally what we're going to be seeing in this. In gross primary production, we're going to be measuring the total amount. And whenever you think gross, that's what we mean, total amount of photosynthetic energy. Photosynthetic energy, so that's the key here. That is being captured. And when we say captured, we're referring specifically to uh, a particular time, in particular time. So when we term this idea of captured, we're simply saying how much of this energy that's being turned from light energy into chemical energy, into this photosynthetic energy, um, how much of it is actually being uh, done, how much of this conversion is actually being done. And we know that the conversion rate is about 1%, but of that 1%, we have to remember that some of this energy will be used, some of this primary production, let's say, some of this energy will be used by producers, will be used by producers. So producers, though they provide that initial energy for the entire ecosystem, they need some of this energy for themselves, and they do use some of this for themselves, specifically during their own cellular respiration. You cannot assume, and you definitely cannot state, that just because something utilizes photosynthesis, it does not utilize cellular respiration. That's absolutely wrong. You have to remember that plants, though they utilize sun energy and convert it into chemical energy, they also need to break down their own glucose sources, their own glucose production through photosynthesis via cellular respiration. And when they do this, when they utilize their own cellular respiration processes, they're taking some of that energy that they converted and utilizing it for themselves. We call this self-energy that they're using R sub A, and that's simply known as autotrophic respiration. How much of the energy that they uh, are converting 
are they consuming themselves for their own autotrophic respiration, their R sub A. So that's our gross primary production. But of that gross primary production of interest to us as an ecosystem ecologist is the net primary production. So we have a gross income and then we have a net income. And that's exactly what we're looking at in this productivity of our ecosystem at the primary production level. Net primary production, otherwise known as NPP, will be the following. It's the amount of energy, always talking about energy, that's our currency in this economic world of ecosystems. And it's not money per se, but it's the amount of energy that remains in tissues. So that's our key here, remains in tissues. Basically, not used, but remains in tissues after that big important process of cell respiration. So though plants will do cell respiration and use some of the energy, some of that energy, of course, will be stored. And that energy, if it's stored, remains in tissues. And we can call this idea of storage energy, of remaining energy, of unused energy, NPP. And that's simply going to be referred to as NPP is equal to that gross primary production minus R sub A. So what you use for autotrophic respiration, minus everything you, you have, minus all of the energy that you've made, it's going to give you the net, the net primary production of this organism. On average, the NPP of a uh, primary uh, producer, let's say, is usually going to be um, about one half the GPP. So NPP on half is about one half GPP. So about half of the energy converted into photosynthetic, photosynthetic energy is going to be used for autotrophic respiration. In other words, half of the energy from photosynthesis will be used for autotrophic respiration. The other half remains in tissues. And if the other half remains in tissues, we're going to state the following. That is going to be considered stored chemical energy very, very valuable stored chemical energy that's available to the next trophic level. To next trophic level. So they use some, but they keep some in the storage form of chemical energy, and thus the first trophic level, of course, is going to be the producers, as we've mentioned already. These are our producers. These are the ones that create a GPP and then eventually turn that into a, we hope that they have a NPP, a net primary production. This NPP is what we as a secondary, uh, per, as a secondary trophic level, in the second trophic level, really, really want. Because if we get the rest, the stored chemical energy, we are then utilizing the second trophic level, and thus we are going to be considered our primary producers, our primary consumers. We are the first ones to get our hands, uh, our mouth specifically, at this NPP, this net primary production, as a result of this photosynthetic process and as a result of the leftovers after autotrophic respiration has been subtracted out. That's why we subtract autotrophic respiration. This is used energy, this is available energy, and then we have a new number of actually stored energy. And then finally, in the third trophic level, of course, just to continue on this path, just for purposes of completion, if we have producers, primary consumers, the third trophic level will often just be the secondary and tertiary consumers. We'll get to this transfer of energy as we move forward, but the most important thing to understand is the distinction between NPP, the actual, let's say, energy, and the GPP, the, uh, the ideal amount of energy. But then when we utilize NPP, we take into account that cells within the plants will be utilizing cell respiration. We subtract it out, then we get a nice stored chemical energy available to our primary consumers and therefore throughout the rest of the trophic levels.